In this video, we're going to give an overview with a financial perspective on aerospace and defense operations. And to start, why is finance important? Why spend any time on this stuff? Well, everyone at a company should understand the impact of their actions on the finances of the business. In every department, people need to speak the language of business. And it turns out that finance is more logic than math skills. And everyone can and should understand the basics. And there's accounting that's happening behind the scenes of every transaction. And how the company keeps track of that is very important to the success of the organization. Okay, let's get right into it. We're going to show you a couple of examples that demonstrate the flow of money through an A&D company. And here's a game board that we'll be using for the exercises. And you can see that we've got a high-level income statement and balance sheet depicted on the board. In the real world, the statements have much more detail, but we've simplified them to help illustrate the points. And the coins that we'll be moving on the statements will say are worth $1 million each in our first scenario. Let's say that at your A&D company, you make wire-guided missiles. So first, Let's set up the financial statements for the current condition of the company. And in this case, we'll say that our company has $2 million in cash, $1 million in stock, and $1 million in retained earnings. And if we set that up on our game board, we've got that $2 million in cash and the $1 million in stock, $1 million in retained earnings, and that makes both sides of the balance sheet equal at $2 million each. And good news, you want a 12-month contract for some wire-guided missiles. And here are the details. You just won a fixed-price contract at 6 p.m. on December 31st of 2030. A customer wants you to produce 200 wire-guided missiles and deliver them on December 31 of 2030. 31. So again, the delivery will be in 2031. And they will pay you a fixed price of $15 million in cash in advance right now. And each missile is expected to cost you $50,000 in cash in technical and production labor, materials, engineering, PMO expenses, and other program expenses in 2031. So how do the financials look right now? At 11.59 p.m. on December 31st of 2030. And to repeat again, that's 2030, not 2031. And if we work that through on the game board with it set up with our starting condition of two million in cash, a million in stock, a million in retained earnings, you can go ahead and pause the video and play it out more fully if you'd like and then you can come back and watch how I do it. Okay, here's what I got. So again, we've got cash in advance from the customer. There it is, $15 million showing up on our balance sheet now in cash. And we have balancing that out a liability. Advance payments, $15 million. So if we work that out both sides, 17 million in total assets, 17 million in liabilities and equity. So why don't we go ahead and calculate some EVM earned value management ratios for that scenario. So as of midnight again, December 31st in 2030, why don't you go ahead, pause the video and make some calculations. And when you come back, you can see what I came up with. Okay, here's what I came up with. If we work through the bookings, the answer is $15 million in bookings that we were awarded. So the booking margin, since we believe it's going to cost $10 million in expenses and it's $15 million that we're getting, we take that difference to $5 million divided by $15 million, 33%, assuming we come in on cost. And our backlog because we haven't begun work on the program, we can't book the sales, but we've got $15 million in backlog of work ready to do next year. And our budget act complete, 
is that $50,000 per missile times 200 missiles for a total of 10 million that we think our budget is to complete in cost this program. And our actual cost of work performed, or ACWP, is zero. We haven't done any work yet, so we don't know what that number is yet. Now we need to actually deliver on the missile contract. So let's assume now it's 11.59 p.m. on December 31st of 2031. And over the past year, we've produced the 200 missiles, but unfortunately, they cost us $55,000 in cash each to build them, not $50,000 as expected. But we did deliver the 200 missiles to the customer. We also paid in that period admin and selling expenses of $1 million in cash to cover our advertising, work on the proposal, administrative costs that we had for the program. We paid taxes of $1 million in cash, how do the financials look at the end of the year now in 2031? Let's go ahead and work through this scenario using the financial statements. And if you'd like to pause the video and work through this yourself, you can then come back and see how we work through it. So the first thing that we've got is we had received advance payments. But by the end of the year, we've actually earned that income, those revenues, and so it's no longer an advance payment, it's now income, it's revenue for us as a company. But matched to that revenue are the costs, the expenses that it took us, the direct expenses specifically, that it took us to produce those missiles. So we'd also need to match to it a cost of sales amount for that $11 million. But through the year, we also had to pay for the work that was done, so cash is going out of the company to pay for the direct labor, direct materials that were involved in production. As well, as mentioned in the scenario, we've got some administrative and selling expense that was associated with this program. So we're going to put that onto the income statement as well. And through the year, the cash goes out. Also, we've got taxes. And we said that we paid that in cash as well. So that leaves our balance sheet, but it shows up as well on the income statement as an expense. So when we net this out, we match revenue to expenses in the period, and we come up with a positive profit of $2 million. And so now if we look at our balance sheet, though, it doesn't balance. We've got $4 million in cash, but we have $1 million in stock and $1 million in retained earnings. How do we make this balance sheet balance? Well, we don't have to do anything. Just by logic, it's going to balance because we didn't specify in the scenario that we were paying a dividend. So the net income that we made now goes on the balance sheet to retained earnings. And at that point, as you can see, the balance sheet balances $4 million in assets, $4 million in liabilities plus equity. Now let's go ahead and calculate some earned value management ratios based on our scenario. And if you'd like to, again, pause, you can work through uh, based on the scenario, the bookings, backlog, the other metrics that we have for you here. And then if you want to come back to the video, we'll show you how we work these out. So working through those EVM ratios based on the scenario, we've got no bookings, because in that scenario, we didn't say that we had additional work. You would hope that you would have some additional work, but in this case, we didn't state it. So actually, our bookings are zero at this point. Our backlog, because we've delivered on this program, the backlog is zero. Our book to bill, again, we have no bookings, so book to bill is zero. Our budgeted cost of work performed, BCWP, 50,000 per missile times 200 missiles for 10 million in BCWP. But the actuality was that our actual cost of work performed, ACWP, turns out it costs 55,000 in direct expenses, labor, and materials to produce those 200 missiles. So we had $11 million in ACWP actual costs. Our CPI then, using those numbers, 10 million divided by 11 million, we're at a 0.91 cost performance indicator, 0.91. Our SPI, schedule performance, is BCWP divided by BCWS, so that's the 10 million 
And turns out we were right on schedule, so 10 million comes out to a 1.0. So our profit margin on this program, not for the company overall, but on the program, we had 15 million in revenues minus the 11 million that we had in direct costs. Divided by that 15 million, that difference gives you 27%. That's still a very nice profit margin, but we had expected to get 33%. So we came in a little bit lower on our profit than we had hoped. Okay, in the scenarios that we just went over, we did a lot. We reviewed the income statement, the balance sheet, talked about how money flows through these statements talked about how the balance sheet is called that because it always balances. It has to. By logic, the way it's structured, assets always have to equal liabilities plus equity. However, on the income statement, profit doesn't always equal cash that you would see on a cash flow statement. And there's accounting happening behind the scenes in the scenarios that we went through and the income statement and the balance sheet are linked together. They're really different views of the company. Well, that's a quick video overview of a financial perspective on aerospace and defense company operations. And if you'd like to take the next step and really bring these numbers alive, contact PRISM to find out more about our BizFighter business simulation. Feel free to contact us through the email address here. Thanks for watching.